this video was inevitable. What's going on guys? I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So with the Batman hitting theaters this weekend, I decided to go back and redo my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time. I did this video back in 2020 and it is a vastly different list now than it was then, mainly because we've gotten a lot of new movies that have taken up spots on that list, but also because I rewatched a lot of things and gained a new appreciation and had even transformative viewings of certain movies. But before I give you guys my ranking of my top 10 favorite comic book movies, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite comic book movies of all time, and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so I'm on any future comic book movie related videos. I do have quite a few honorable mentions and I'm going to go ahead and rattle those off. So first up we've got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, X-Men Days of Future Past, Logan, Deadpool, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Avengers, and Spider-Man 2. This was an extremely hard list for me to compile because I love a lot of these movies near and dear to my heart. But coming in at number 10 for me is going to be The Dark Knight rises. Now this is a fantastic conclusion to the Nolan trilogy. The movie just makes me feel some type of way, especially at the end. I think this movie probably has my favorite Batman score of all time. Bane is a menacing villain and it's truly a redemption story. I've talked about this movie a few times in recent videos, but Batman does get sent to hell in this movie. He has to climb his way out of it and it's a true comeback story. It gets me going. The score is motivational. The scene where he climbs out of the pit, that's one of my favorite scenes in all the movies. So I gotta love it. I gotta show respect to this. Number nine on my list is going to be James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Now I have the poster right behind me right here. The Peacemaker show took this movie to another level as well, especially looking back at Peacemaker's character and how far he has come in this movie. The Suicide Squad is unlike most comic book movies we get nowadays. It takes tons of risks. Characters are dying left and right, especially in the first 10 minutes. It's funny as hell. It's very raunchy. It's very bloody and gory. And it's distinctly James Gunn. He gets us to care about the most obscure characters from Polka Dot Man to Ratcatcher 2 to King Shark. James Gunn just knows how to write and direct movies. His style shines through in The Suicide Squad, and it makes it more unique than most of the films on this list. Number eight is going to be Captain America Civil War. Now, this is my favorite of the Captain America trilogy for sure. What I love about this movie is how it pits two of our heroes against each other, and you can kind of go wishy-washy on whose side you're on throughout the movie because of how they write it. They'll give you a scene where Tony will feel this immense amount of guilt, and will have this confrontation with this lady who lost their son in Sokovia, and you'll have a scene of Cap with Peggy, and you understand where both sides are coming from. The action is top-notch from the airport battle, some of the fight scenes in the streets with Bucky and the motorcycle. It gives us Black Panther in the MCU. It introduces Tom Holland and Spider-Man into the MCU, and it also gives us some of the most emotional gut punches in the entire MCU at the end when we see that videotape of Bucky killing Tony's parents and Tony goes unhinged. This movie understands conflict and it might have some of the best in the entire MCU. Number seven on my list is going to be the one that started it all for the MCU, Iron Man. Every single time I talk about this movie on my channel, I mention this. In fourth grade, I had the DVD. I would come home every single day for like a few weeks in a row and just watch it on a repeat. It was my routine, and this movie's ingrained in my head. Tony Stark is my favorite MCU character. I just think he's so suave and cool, and I love his arc in this movie where he realizes his weapons are causing more destruction than good in the overall grand scheme of things, and he kind of comes into his own throughout the course of the movie. He has a very sweet relationship with Pepper Potts, and I think Jeff Bridges as Obadiah Stane slash Iron Monger is a formidable foe. This is one of my favorite origin stories for a superhero ever, and we wouldn't have the rest of the MCU without Iron Man, so I gotta pay respect to it as well. Number six on my list is going to be Spider-Man, the first film in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, and for the longest time, this was my favorite Spider-Man movie. One major factor in that is Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. He's one of the best Spider-Man villains ever. Probably my favorite from the movies, I would say. This is just the perfect origin for Spider-Man. The Uncle Ben death scene crushes your heart. We see him design his own suit, and we have to see him make sacrifices as Peter Parker to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man, the core element of Spider-Man. Green Goblin is one of the best comic movie villains of all time, and overall, this movie just slaps. It's one of the most rewatchable Spider-Man movies. I watched it like three or four times alone last year in preparation for No Way Home, and it's actually my favorite of the Raimi trilogy. So before I get into my top five, again, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below your favorite comic book films. Number five on my list, The Dark Knight. Now, I actually rewatched this movie recently, and it was a transformative viewing because I've always loved this movie, but there was a period of time about two years ago. When I posted my last comic book ranking, this was number nine, and I kind of said it was a little overrated. I have no clue what mindset I was on when I said that because this is one of the greatest conflict films of all time. Heath Ledger's Joker is an absolute icon, rest in peace. He delivers one of the best performances ever. This movie wouldn't be the same without Joker in my eyes. Seeing the downfall of Harvey Dent into Two-Face and how Joker's responsible for all this chaos in Gotham City is immaculate. It might be Christopher Nolan's best movie from the intense opening heist scene to the final moments where Batman takes the fall for Harvey Dent. It is a perfect story from start to finish. It is so well directed and I can't really critique this movie too much. My piece of advice would be if you've gotten on a 
instead of any movie and think maybe it's a little overrated I haven't seen it in a while or the internet's saying it could be overrated definitely go back and rewatch it because we'll probably have a change of heart now the top four for me is extremely difficult because some of these movies have only been out for a few months and some of them I've loved for a few more years so they kind of have that going for them but I'm just going to be completely blunt with you guys number four on my list right now is going to be Avengers Endgame a movie that is the biggest event of my life I would say I mean going into this movie we knew people were going to die we knew it was going to basically conclude the main first part of the MCU and it did that perfectly. I think Tony Stark and Captain America have the perfect character arc. I've talked about this movie to death on my channel. You guys know I love it and it's just a perfect conclusion. I'm a sucker for a great conclusion and that's what Avengers Endgame is. It's three hours. It's a perfect three-act structure. Not much else to say really. It's perfection. Number three on my list, The Batman. This is the best Batman movie in my opinion. I have a ranking. Make sure to check it out but it just feels so unlike any other Batman film we've got. Robert Pattinson is the best Batman in my eyes and we get to see him be a detective for three hours hours. The creative choices from the POV shots of Batman being a detective to seeing Riddler be a straight up serial killer is insanity and it's a very terrifying movie. It teeters on the R rating. It's a thriller for three hours and it doesn't have the most action but I think that actually enhances the action sequences because they're even better when we get to them especially the penguin car chase scene which might be the standout in the movie. It's a mystery from beginning to end. There's so many twists and turns I love and it's the definitive Batman movie in my eyes. I love the first 10 minutes when he's voicing over this dark city of Gotham really set the tone and vibe for the entire film. It is perfect in my eyes. I can't wait to rewatch it for years to come. It could even climb up to that number one spot over time. Now, one and two, I'm kind of flip-flopping with right now, and it's really difficult for me, but right now, I'm going to say number two is Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, I love this movie so much. It's my favorite Spider-Man film, and it's not just nostalgia-based. That's the main critique I've seen over time is, oh, you only like that movie because it's got Tobey and Andrew in it. Well, hell yeah, they take it to another level, but they're also pivotal to Tom Holland's Spider-Man arc because he has to find himself in them, and he's finding himself in himself. It's just a different version of them. After he goes through his own personal loss in that film, they're there to pick him back up. And the scene of all three of them swinging is one of my favorite moments in movie theater history. That experience I'll always cherish forever. It's one of my favorite moments. And I've said this before, this movie makes me feel unlike most movies. Like it stirs up so much happy, joyful emotions in me and feelings of nostalgia that I can't help but love it. Does the first hour drag a little bit on rewatch? I think so, especially on fifth viewing. But it's got everything you love. Spider-Man suffers through loss, and by the end of the film, he makes his own mature decision that he has to make sacrifices as Peter Parker to be Spider-Man that New York and the world needs. It's a perfect Spider-Man story and the best we've seen on the big screen. But taking my number one spot for my favorite comic book movie of all time at this very moment is Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War is one of the most fast-paced films I've ever seen. It is the beginning of the end for the MCU in my eyes in a way. And I'll never forget how shocking the ending of this film was. Thanos wins, and a villain rarely wins in comic book movies, but Thanos wins, they could have not made Endgame or anything, and the world would have just pretty much been at peace in his eyes. The moment when Thor comes down on Wakanda, the battle on Titan when they're all going up against Thanos, the way those two action sequences are intertwined with the editing is perfect. It, again, is one of the most insane endings I've seen to a comic book movie. And I don't rewatch this one as much as I should, but I'll never forget seeing it and the hype, waiting that whole year between Infinity War and Endgame, the hype was unmatched. The way the Russo brothers are able to manage all these different characters in different settings works. It's perfectly paced and I adore Infinity War. Now ask me a year from now and No Way Home or the Batman could be higher up. I just didn't want to put them at number one just yet because I want to let them sit a little bit longer and see how they really play out over the test of time. But that's going to do it for my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time. Definitely let me know yours in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future comic book related things as Moon Knight is coming at the end of the month. I have a ton of Batman content on my channel right now. Make sure to check all that out. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Batman and all these movies. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>